This is going to be a stream of consciousness style video. I've got to get it out of my head and the topic ties in well with Halloween. I hope everyone enjoys the video, like or dislike since this is different stuff. Subscribe to more stuff, comment your thoughts, ring the bells, everyone blah blah blah. Let's get into this. Horror is defined to be a feeling of fear, shock, or disgust, and horror properties lend into these dimensions well. In media, we subcategorize horrors into what kind of fears trying to be expressed. Body horror in stuff like Dead Space or House of Wax, existential horror a la Lovecraft and Junji Ito's Spiral, full horror in Emily Carroll's works and that upcoming Antler film, and so on. Horror is flexible. It is imaginative. It is varied in how you can express a horrific feeling. But this video wants to look at the medium of horror and how it affects your digestion of the piece and the impact of said piece. Mediums alter horror. A medium here is defined as the mode of consumption of a given property or subject. A book with just words is a medium. A comic book or manga is a different medium with the incorporation of paneling and the added sense of sight in the art. Television is a medium, a nebulous one since the advent of YouTube and streaming services allowing users to watch content on their mobile devices, their computer monitors, or a whole in-theater setup. Not even to mention playback functions altering the pace at which horror can be consumed, allowing the user to adjust how tense they'll feel in a given scene. While watching a story unfold, the audio cues you in on what feeling you should be experiencing. It is a language that we are familiar with, motifs in audio hinting at when a monster or scare is about to occur, or visual cues obscuring the image of monsters to allow audiences to fill in the gaps. Then there's just audio, the podcast, the audio play. Podcasts only have their audio to work with, and depending on your method of consumption, you can experience it in the background while doing something else, like most of us, or settle down on a chair or couch and focus on the narrative in your ears. Podcasts are intimate. It feels like you're in a room chatting with friends in most other circumstances. That intimacy is greater or lesser depending on your attention and focus to the subject and the device you're listening with, be it earbuds, headsets, speakers in a home. This isn't even mentioning whether you're listening to something mono or stereo and the audio techniques used in manifesting breath and space within a given piece. What happens when this intimacy is violated? What happens when you consume horror through just the audio? where the piece was built solely for that prospect. I'd say you get something like the Magnus Archives. Spoilers, by the way, I'm going to talk a bit about the story further along. The Magnus Archives is a radio play produced by Rusty Quill following the story of Jonathan Sims, the head archivist of the titular Magnus Institute. The audio is diegetic, contextualized as Mr. Sims reading a horrific account on a tape recorder for archival purposes. The audio is subtle here, faint background music and noise isolation focus solely on his words, increasing the weight of a horrific retelling of something amiss or terribly wrong. The atmosphere during the scary bits of a retelling is oppressive and foreboding. I think if the show was just recountings of questionably terrible things happening to people, I wouldn't be praising its laurels as hard as I want to now. No. This story is as much a dissection of horror and its forms as it is an actual story of workers dealing with a situation they can't entirely grasp either, because information is obfuscated from their view or purposefully made obtuse by the powers that be. The first link to a larger story was the two-part episode of The Priest in Prison. We hear their retelling of the situation and begin to piece, slowly, that certain statements read from previous stories tie into this one. This priest was mentioned before as having helped a builder unroot a gnarled tree from a yard. Similarities begin to form as you realize each statement is tied to a capital fear. A fear of insects and all that entails. A fear of fetid, rotting things, of disease and filth. A fear of the dark, a classic. A fear of spiders and a loss of control, helplessly caught in a web of lies or threads that tug you to your doom. 
The fears in this world are personified, having avatars or acolytes imbibing in that raw power to terrorize the people around them. And this story couldn't have been possible if it were on another medium. Think about the strengths of podcasts again. Feelings of intimacy and a need to keep track of the audio at all times lest you get lost. The faint details in the story become more noticeable as the story progresses, yes, but the hints are there near the beginning and you as the audience can pick up on it if you're keen to hear it. The intimacy makes the horror listen to visceral. It paints a canvas in your mind of the situation and at times might cause you to turn around and wonder what kind of creatures lurk just beyond our own comforts. It just wouldn't work in a television format. The narrative uses the tapes as a motif later in the story and as a device to prevent audiences from learning information the characters become privy to. The closest TV would manage is replacing the tapes with a video camera that an archivist reads in front of, but the symbolism there would alter the weight of a reveal at the very end of the story in a significant way. Moreover, the depictions of the horrors experienced on the screen will pale in comparison to anything your mind fills in with the sound effects they provide. It wouldn't work as a book either because that medium's strengths don't lend themselves well to this kind of experience. I'd maybe say it could function like a House of Leaves style book, but the novelty of reading something like that would wear off quickly and become inaccessible to a wider audience. An advantage that could be taken in that medium is to treat the novel or book like a compilation of research notes that the readers can double back to, essentially emulating the researchers in the story and becoming a character in their own right. But that experience would wane with each passing season as the character narrative starts becoming more and more prominent. We start focusing, as an audience, on the characters of Jonathan Sims and his researchers as opposed to the subjects within a given archive reading. What I am trying to say is that the medium of a given subject affects the way we synthesize the piece and our feelings through the synthesis process. If you watched Pontypool, you find yourself caught in those washed away colors, sitting at the end of the world with DJ Mazzy, taking no prisoners. Listen to the same audio ripped straight from the film in its audio play adaptation. You're left uncomfortable as a potential Canadian radio listener tuning into the end of this small town. The feelings of horror are tinged with different overtones in my mind. This is also a recommendation to listen to the Magnus Archives and their breakdown of horror. The stories practically grab you in a trance, and the descriptions of certain grotesque scenes are engrossing in a morbid fascination sort of way. There's a lot of material to listen to at 200 episodes, and I broke through most of it while cleaning my house or shopping for groceries. Happy Halloween, and enjoy your time bumping shoulders with Creatures of the Night. This has been Mr. Staleman with Intimate Horror Immersing Heads, Locking Off. I really...